Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss at Internet Shitlords, and I've tried to make this video before. <laughs> I actually tried it, was doing the video, got it to about 20 minutes. I had uh, on top of, you know, just behind here, my um, uh, Big Chunks' sister Meatball had climbed up there. And it was going along great, getting lots of shots of both the cat and the books as I was doing the video. And then she decides to push over both books, which knock over my uh, my coffee producer <laughs> and uh, and ended up spilling everywhere. Uh, now, it wasn't these books. It's a copy of one of my copies of Cults of Chaos and my, one of my copies of Arrows of Indra. Uh, so if anyone knows how to get like coffee marks off books, I'd be really appreciative. Anyways, here comes the second try, hopefully without, you know, Meatball getting in the way, and although she's, she is cute, but she just wrecked two of my books and one of my videos. So, uh, today I was going to do a short video, though it was turning out to be rather long in the first try. I'm going to try to shorten it down again this time, because on, on Sunday we're going to be having another episode of Inappropriate Characters, so any week that we do that, I don't feel like I really need to to even make a video, but for some reason I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> uh, on Sunday, on Inappropriate Characters, by the way, we're going to have as a guest star the creator of Secrets of Blackmore, which is the, um, the award-winning documentary that talks about the origin of the D&D hobby, right? The, the true origin of D&D. And uh, specifically with a big emphasis on, on Dave Arneson and the Blackmore campaign. And so, like, what happened in the early, early moments when when D&D &D was being created, right, and the whole story of um, of Gygax and Arneson and, uh, you know, the problems that they had with each other and all kinds of other things. Uh, it, it looks like an interesting movie. I've, I've started watching part of it. I hopefully we'll get to the end of it by, the, uh, by Sunday. And, uh, yeah, we should have some very interesting questions for him. So, of interest to anyone who's an old-school gamer, for sure, or who wants to know more about the origins of the hobby. Um, but today I'm going to talk to you <laughs> about uh, something that's been happening on Twitter, of course, the SJWs up to their, their usual hijinks, but it is really funny, actually. Um, the SJWs go through these cycles where they, um, they're always attacking the OSR, right? Because for, let's, let's start right from the beginning. They hate D&D, &D, right? They've always hated D&D. &D. They hated D&D &D since the time of, like, the Blackmore campaign, actually, right? Since early, early D&D. With uh, Gygax and company, we know this. Like we can guess that there's probably some guy in the original um, Minneapolis gaming club or something that was like, "Oh, this game that everybody loves, I hate it so much." Right? And that was an S that was a future SJW. <laughs> that person, I don't know, ended up voting for Nancy Pelosi or something, <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. I don't know, <laughs> but they. Uh, um, we could speculate that, but we know for a fact that there were people like that, people that despised D and D and despised it because they, you know, you could tell, so there are some people that might have legitimate gripes about D&D, &D, but there's a lot of people that despise D&D &D because it's what everyone else likes. And that, that that's the 8% mentality, the percent, you know, those 8% of people who are SJWs, they want to feel super special and they want to feel better than everyone else, even though they have no discernible talents. So the way they feel better than everyone else is by trying to shit on and destroy everything that everyone else loves, right? That's SJWism in a nutshell. Right? It's, it's class envy exported to the ultra-personal level of someone who feels unappreciated in high school. Right? Not picked on or anything, just, just that, that nobody has recognized how incredibly awesome they are, and so you're going to take revenge on the world. Anyway, those people, we know that they existed even in like the early days of the hobby, because you know in early Dragon magazines you see some some of this hate mail that Gary Gygax was getting, right? So there's like, you know, we, we know that they've always been around. The only times they've liked D&D &D is if they if they wrecked it already, like with 4th edition, or if they're like pretending to like it to take it over in order to wreck it, which is what you were seeing until very recently. But if you've watched my recent videos, my last couple of videos, you'll know that at this point they've already taken the masks off. They're calling for open boycotts of D&D, &D, of Wizards of the Coast, right? They're... They're going back to their original skin and saying, yeah, we're, <laughs> we despise the Indian and everything it stands for, and we want to force you not to play by accusing you of being a racist if you do play, or something like that. And so for these people, the OSR is a huge problem, because D&D &D will outlive Wizards of the Coast, right? It'll, it'll outlive 
Hasbro. It'll outlive the brand, right? It could outlive an apocalypse in theory. Um, because as long as there is the old school movement, as long as there's people willing to play the old school games and to make up new ones, then as an organic hobby, it's going to keep existing in some way or another. And this is absolutely unacceptable to the SJWs, especially because people in the OSR branch of the hobby are usually older people. They're usually, you know, Gen X and up. And so they know that the millennials are full of bullshit. They've, they've seen this nonsense before and they're not going to take any, any, any crap from them, right? Um, so they really, really, really hate the OSR. They hate the OSR as like the special... Um, you know, me plus ultra of hating D and D, right? It's like the 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 summation, right? Like something like this. This is the summation of everything they hate about D and D, right? So, um, the, and and you know, and Western civilization too, I guess. But well, there you are. So they they're they're trying everything they can to destroy it. Um, and they'll go back and forth between declaring that, D that oh, the OSR is dead, the OSR is finished, nobody's playing the OSR anymore, and then people keep making products. Or saying, you know, this person in the OSR did something wrong, and therefore we have to all stop being OSR. Now, come on, everybody stop being OSR, right? Because of the, something this one person did. And sometimes there, you know, there's even a one person that does do something wrong um, that gets, you know, that, that should be rightly c condemned. Um, but, you know, th that's irrelevant to them. And anyways, it doesn't matter because you're not going to stop participating in a hobby because there's one or two bad apples in a hobby, right? If I, if there's some guy in the hobby that, you know, in the OSR hobby that, um, I don't know, beat his wife, um, I would condemn beating his wife. I wouldn't stop playing the game I love because some other guy beat his wife, right? <laughs> that's got nothing to do with the game, right? It's got nothing to do with anything. So... So yeah, they, they keep getting thwarted that way. And then recently, a while back ago, they did, and, and there's a video about this. You'd have to look further back in my, in my list of videos where I talk about Sword Ream. Right? Sword Ream was the last time. This is, this is not the first time they've done this, but it was the last big time that they, all the SJW said, well, then we're going to create a new OSR that's going to be totally better and greater and more wonderful than your, your OSR, and no one will want to be in yours anywhere because it'll only be for the, the bigots and the racists and people who like Trump and who love the flag and <laughs> think that America is a good thing and think that democracy works. None of those things are true. <laughs> and so they, they went and decided to create Sword Ream. I kid you not. Right? That's what they called it. It's supposed to, I guess it's supposed to be Sword Dream. Dream, but it's really, you know, everybody's calling it Sword Dream. <laughs> they were reaming things with their swords. And uh, they went, and Sword Dream, of, of course, because again, none of these people have any discernible talents, all it ended up producing was some hashtag posts on Twitter, some of which were, you know, very clearly mocking them, but others of which you couldn't really tell, because at this point, it's, it's impossible to distinguish things SJWs actually believe from parodies of things SJWs actually believe, right? Like, you know, if, if I told you a week ago, oh, some, you know, there, there's this post by this person pretending to be a BLM activist, an actor that says, you know, white people are subhumans, right? Uh, and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and also a bunch of anti-Semitic stuff. Um, you'd go, no, no, that's, that's just got to be somebody doing a parody, right? But here we are, you know? So anyway, um, these guys, they left forever, and now they're back, of course, slunk in, back in, and, and start talking about the OSR as if they're a part of it, even though they've, it's like, this is what, like, the fourth time they've declared it dead or abandoned it, right? Um, but they're, yeah, we're supposed to listen to them, right? But the person they went after this time is really interesting, because they didn't go after, like, um, they didn't go after me, or they didn't go after Venger Satanis, or someone like that, um, they didn't, it's not even like James Raggy, right? Like they went after this guy called uh, James Stewart, um, who is an OSR designer. Um, he's made stuff for the OSR. And, and uh, he's, the thing is, you know, like uh, he's obviously not clear, clearly not an SJW. I mean, even before this, you knew that because he, he actually made stuff. He's from that branch of the OSR. So there's like three groups in the OSR. There's the, the grognards, like the old, old grognards that think, you know, they think Lion and Dragon is a blasphemy because it was produced after 1979. They don't want to do anything except play the old games. They don't want any new games, right? Then there's like 
the mainstream of the OSR, which are people are making games that are based on D&D rules, but, but altered into something new and different. Um, games like Lion and Dragon, you know, Arrows of Indra, which is now covered in coffee, uh, and uh, other games like that, Star Adventurer, right? All of these are games that are, that are with old school foundations and mechanics, but, you know, they're not actually from the old time, olden days, right? Um, and that's what most people are. But then there's also this kind of branch that when you get like to the limits of beyond James Raggy and L Lamentations of the Flame Princess territory, you get to what's called the DIY OSR, which are guys that are like, they were the crowd that hung out with Zach Smith before he got in trouble. And uh, they, they're, they're all would-be would artists, right? And they want to be like, you know, punk edgy hipsters. <laughs> uh, doing their, trying to, to show how cool they are by doing weird, kooky stuff, right? Like, their game products are usually semi-incoherent. And, and um, sometimes, though, they're good, right? Like, they have produced stuff that is really, really good, um, weird, but really, really good, right? I mean, that, so, they're, 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 again, they're talented. It means they probably, there's a 99% chance they're not SJWs, right? Because if they're, if they're really one of the 8% of the SJWs, they probably wouldn't have any talent. Um, and this guy, uh, James Stewart, is one of them, right? He's made, he's got a blog, he, very popular blog. He's made some products. He's contributed to other products. He's, he's well known. I couldn't really name anything he's made, to be honest. But he's, he's done a lot, of, a lot of products that are like these weird, edgy kind of uh, indie OSR stuff. Um, his blog talks a lot about um, making D &D, a less violent D&D, &D, right? That, so... You know, when you listen to what he writes about, um, and he means like, he's not meaning like, oh, you know, violence against women or so, or like some kind of, he, he doesn't politicize it, but he's talking about it more like trying to create a D&D &D that's more about exploring and encountering weird people, doing a D&D &D that's more like a Studio Ghibli movie or something like that. Like, that's what, what, what was on his blog. And um, so you do get the impression, though, reading that, reading his tweets, that James Stewart is definitely not like I. I would be really, really, really surprised if if he voted Trump in the last election, and probably I'd be surprised if he intended to vote Trump in this one. Right? I'm thinking everything about him. Like I, I didn't find any, you know, telltale evidence. He doesn't do political posts on his on his tweet on his Twitter at least, and on his blog, which are the two things I looked at. Right? Um, but everything peripheral, right? Like the peripheral evidence suggests to me that this guy is a centrist liberal, a, a centrist tending towards progressive, right? Like tending towards social Democrat, maybe, right? Like he's one of these people, right? He's, 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 he's a, a liberal and they're trying to destroy this guy. He said, we have, to, we have to get rid of him. He's shown what he's really like and we have to purge the OSR. And like that's, that's the, the latest hilarious prose. Thank you, Mr. Triceratops for sending me the post of the, the OSR. Uh, the, the SJWs uh, infiltrators into the OSR and talking about how you have to do, if you keep being friends with this person, you're not doing your part to purge the OSR of bad influences, you know, uh, like James Stewart, like the guy who does like uh, pictures of little bears in D&D adventures, you know, like that's their enemy. That's, that's the new racist, you know, that's the, that's the new fascist that they have to be opposed to, right? Is this guy who writes about like how to make reaction roles where there's a chance the monsters will be just doing weird stuff or will be helpful in the, and have conversations with you, right? Like this is this is their this is their great enemy that they've come here to liberate, you know, in the name of the people. <laughs> so, so like you know, but this is really interesting because it, it matches what's going on in the bigger picture with Wizards of the Coast. They've taken the mask off. They've said, no, screw it, Wizards. You, you, we're, we're actually not, we don't expect you to, to win. We're always going to say it's not enough, right? Wizards bent over to everything the SJWs demanded about Oriental Adventures, about putting disclaimers, about, you know, their, their hiring practices. They've, they, they've apologized. They did, they did everything they could to placate these people, and at every single step, what they're told is not good enough, oh, uh, Wizards of the Coast, not good enough, right? We're, you don't, you know, you have to change everything, right? You have to fire everybody who, <laughs> you know, everybody who works for you now that is, uh, that isn't, you know, that is, that, that's a white cisgendered male, at least. <laughs> and uh, you have to put in all the people that we want, all of us, right? All the 8%, we all have to work for you now. 
you got to pay us to do like diversity consulting, which basically means pay us to do nothing. So we, we allow, you know, it's basically protection money. So we don't attack you. Uh, you have to do all these things. If you don't do these things, then we're still going to keep going after you. And if you do all these things, we'll find more things for you to do and more money for you to have to give us and more profits for you to lose because we want to destroy D and D, right? Like that's what they're saying to wizards of the coast. And over here in the OSR, what they're saying when they're going after a guy like this James Stewart guy, like, and his only crime, he did this post about about bears. Right? I guess he's got a thing for bears, right? Where he did like this this funny little you know, non-rhyming verse about different types of bears, and his last one was like a uh, a bear that uh, that doesn't uh, define itself by the color of its skin or something like that, right? Um, with like hand clap emojis in between, right? And that, that's it. I swear to Christ, that is the only thing he did is enough for them to now want to destroy him, right? For them to have just gone after him all over the place. And to his credit, I'm going to say this, because it really, so far, everything I've said about this guy makes him sound like a total wuss, doesn't it? Like you'd think he sounds like a complete wuss. But James Stewart has stood up to these guys. He said, "No, I don't care what you think. You know, I'm, I'll just block you if you if you keep insulting me, right?" And you can tell that he's not he's not worried because I I think this is also a big problem now for the SJWs. They're uh, they realize that they're losing, so now their policy is liberals get the knife too, right? Like they know James Stewart is not. You know, I don't think he's wearing a MAGA cap, you guys, right? Like, I really doubt it. Maybe he's, you know, he's dressed in like a toque that looks like a little bear head or something. I'm not sure what it is. But but he's, he's I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that this guy is not a Republican. He's not, he's not even like a Romney Republican, right? Like, he's no, nothing, nothing close to that. And they're trying to destroy him. Because what they want to do is now, like, they know they're not going to stop the rest of the OSR, but they, they, want to, they want to stop mainstream, like, moderates, moderates and liberals from going away from them. And they're, they're trying to do that by fear and intimidation. They're saying, you know what? You're liberal. You're, you've never posted anything political. That's enough. We're going to attack you for that, right? You can't be liberal anymore. You have to be Stalinist like us, right? And you can't not post. You have to post what we tell you to from now on forever, Right. And if you don't do this, we're going to destroy you. And that's what they're doing to this guy. Right. But he's he's you know, the reaction is also really fascinating because he said, no, screw you guys. I'm not I'm not going to apologize. I got nothing to apologize for. I just did a stupid little thing. And, I, you know, and it doesn't mean anything, you know, and and, and he's like block people that, that, that are, you know, trying to harass him. And, and I guess he's not ready. He must have. I don't know if he's either not employed or employed in something, you know, like self-employed or something where he's he's not in danger of getting himself doxxed. I hope so. Um, but he also, you know, he's recognized what I knew and what I've seen that is coming up now is that the, the SJWs, they're, they're becoming more and more ferocious, more violent, more brutal because they know they're losing, because they know more and more people are just stopping, have just stopped paying attention to them. They've stopped caring about being attacked about about not about they don't not care about being attacked but they don't care about obeying the SJWs right and so they're they're they know that they can that, that there are people that are standing up to them and that they can stand up to them if the SJWs want to try to cancel them they're going to fight you know because the the problem with the whole SJW tactic is that the more extreme you get and the more people that you think need to get the chop then the more people you have that have got a complete vested interest in stopping you and in not letting you have that power, right? So, yeah, I guess I, I, I think James Stewart gained himself some Twitter followers from the, the mainstream branch of the OSR crowd. And uh, I think that, that it shows that these guys, you know, they're never going to beat the OSR. And so the OSR will outlive both Wizards of the Coast and the SJW movement. I'm fairly certain about that. Now, do watch out, though, if, uh, if you're going to elections in November, because you can bet, given what you've seen in the streets lately, you can bet that they will literally be trying to kill people who, are, who they think are going to go vote for Trump, right? Like, they're going to they're gonna start murdering people if, they, if by that time the streets don't have people that are actually going to enforce the law enforcement. Because if you're in a city where that's not happening, they're going to go, they're going to kill you, 
the police are not going to arrest you and the the mayor isn't going to have you charged right and the governor isn't going to have you charged right so they're, they're, no nobody's going to nobody's going to stop somebody from killing you um unless you know there's intervention let's hope there is <laughs> anyway that's it for today and uh, on that light political note uh, if you like this video, please share it. Post it anywhere you think people will be interested, especially if those people are SJWs that you're going to try to piss off. Subscribe to this video, to this channel and hit the notification button so you'll learn you know, whenever I've posted a new video. And um, if you enjoy my, my writing, if you enjoy my stuff, you might enjoy, enjoy my talk, you might enjoy my writing. Though, Like I said, my writing is very apolitical, right? These are just pure games, right? So you can check out stuff like Lion and Dragon or The Old School Companion or Arrows of Indra or Cults of Chaos or Dark Albion. Um, all of my books, they're really worth getting. But uh, you can also pick up, if you don't have, if you don't want to or can't get a solid book or can't afford it right now, if you want to support me, besides Patreon or PayPal, which you're also very welcome to do, and the links are in the description below, you can check out and purchase one of my RPG Pundit Presents PDFs. We're up to 101 issues now, including issue 100, Star Adventure, which is a print product, but it's only $9.99 for print and PDF, um, which is a complete space opera RPG. And uh, RPG Pundit Presents 101, Tamlane, which is a great medieval adventure based off of a fairy story, a medieval fairy story. Uh, I guess maybe the, I'm not that different from James Stewart, right? He's writing about bears and I'm writing about fairies. But, you know, these are, these are really badass fairies. Like, it's not, you know, there's, there's the wild hunt and, you know, there's uh, Hellmouth and all kinds of stuff that's really interesting in the, in the adventure. And if you don't like those two, there's 99 others, right? Full of stuff that you can use in your OSR, uh, D&D, fantasy RPG in general, um, in all kinds of stuff, from ranging from weird gonzo fantasy all the way to really uh, traditionalist, medieval, authentic gaming. Um, and, you know, they cost, apart from Star Adventure, they cost between 99 cents and 4.99. So they're really cheap. But uh, you're getting something for yourself, and you're giving me a tip for my to encourage me to keep making videos in spite of my cat ruining my books from them. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's it for today. Thank you very much. And uh, keep sharing the video. Currently smoking Lorenzetti Poker plus Argento Natural.